you've begged, you've pleaded, you've screamed, and for the basic second anniversary, it's finally time to give the people what they want. By extremely popular demand, these are the basics on one of the greatest Transformers characters of all time. The treacherous Starscream. The toy that would become Starscream was originally released in the Japanese toy line Diaclone in 1983 under the name Jet Robo. It transformed into an F-15 Eagle jet fighter and was imported by Hasbro in 1984 to become part of the first year of the Transformers toy line, in which it was also released in two other color schemes as Thundercracker and Skywarp. The figure was retooled and recolored to create numerous other additional characters over the years, and from these beginnings, Decepticons who share a body type with Starscream have become one of the longest running staples of the whole franchise, collectively known as the Seekers. Originally named Ulchtar by Marvel Comics writers Jim Shooter and Denny O'Neill, Starscream was renamed by Bob Budiansky, who assigned him the function of Decepticon Aerospace Commander, armed him with the paralyzing Null Ray, and characterized him as a ruthless, egotistical upstart whose ambition was to dethrone Megatron and become Decepticon leader. Starscream was one of the main characters of the Transformers animated series. From the very beginning of the show and all through its first two seasons, he was always there to plot against Megatron, openly criticizing his leadership and staging duplicitous schemes to seize command for himself. Megatron has fallen! I, Starscream, am now your leader! Decepticons, follow me! But though he talked a big game, he was a coward at heart, and when his plots would inevitably meet with failure, he'd resort to whimpering, groveling, and begging for mercy, ensuring that Megatron never actually got rid of him for long. You are either lying, or you're stupid! I'm stupid! I'm stupid! Starscream's treachery was the subject of numerous episodes, but perhaps his most notable power play saw him create the Combaticons to serve as his own personal army. The series also fleshed out Starscream's backstory, establishing that before the war, he had worked with his former friend Skyfire as a scientist. Without a doubt, it was the cartoon that made Starscream the character he is today. His well-defined role, equal parts cunning schemer and hapless schmuck, the comedic potential of his and Megatron's endless bickering, and the iconically shrill performance of actor Chris Latta combined to make Starscream one of the most popular Transformers of the era and of all time. As such, it might surprise you to learn that in the early days of the Marvel comic book, Starscream wasn't a particularly notable character, existing mostly in the background and only displaying his personality through the occasional snide remark or treacherous thought. Stories exclusive to the United Kingdom's version of the comic used him to better effect, with key roles for him that saw him scheme and plot and inevitably get himself into trouble, but still, he would be unceremoniously killed off less than two years into the series' run, taken out by Omega Supreme. A similar fate awaited Starscream in 1986's The Transformers The Movie. The film saw Starscream jettison the fatally wounded Megatron into space and finally claim leadership, only for Megatron, having been remade into Galvatron by the monster planet Unicron, to crash the coronation and take vengeance on Starscream once and for all by reducing him to ashes. But because Starscream's toy was still being sold in 1986, he got to return in two episodes of the subsequent third season of the cartoon as a ghost, possessing various Decepticons and conspiring with Unicron to regain his body. Though his toy was eventually discontinued in 1987, Starscream would also return to life in the comic book in 1988, finally getting a chance to shine in its pages as the villain of one of its biggest stories. After being repaired and reactivated, Starscream seized the vast cosmic power of the ancient Cybertronian database, the Underbase, and embarked on a massacre, slaughtering scores of Transformers who tried to stand against him. The power of the Underbase proved too much for him, however, and destroyed him from within. But he wasn't gone for long. 
Now well aware of Starscream's popularity, Hasbro released a new toy of him in 1989. A classic pretender who used an outer shell to masquerade as a human being. This new figure ensured that Starscream was soon brought back to life in the comics once again, rebuilt to serve Megatron as a mindless weapon, only to regain his free will thanks to the tampering of Ratchet. This was followed in 1990 by a non-transforming Action Master toy, and though Starscream never adopted this form in the comics, its release ensured that he remained a supporting character in the series throughout its final year, still up to his old traitorous tricks. Now, following the end of the original Transformers toy line, many classic characters wouldn't be seen again until the 2000s, but Starscream maintained a high profile throughout the 1990s. In 1993, his original toy was recolored and re-released with new accessories as part of the Transformers Generation 2 toy line, and he remained a supporting antagonist in the Generation 2 comic, even temporarily seizing the power of the Autobot Matrix only to give it up when he realised that the purity of its energy was turning him good. In 1997, a new Starscream toy was released as part of the Machine Wars toy line, and the character even returned to TV screens when his ghost from the original cartoon guest starred in the Beast Wars animated series, temporarily possessing Waspinator and usurping command of the Predacons. Starscream's ability to transcend death had always been fairly inexplicable, but Beast Wars justified it by explaining that he possessed a mutant indestructible spark. In 1998, the Japanese exclusive spin-off series Beast Wars II introduced its own incarnation of Starscream. Now, like many characters from the Beast era, this Starscream was a separate individual who merely shared the name of the original. But he was a very similar bot, an effeminate, narcissistic bootlicker who was always scheming to betray his comrades in order to advance his standing with his superiors. He was partners with the lumbering BB, with whom he combined into a stealth bomber, and later in the series was reformatted into the cyborg shark Hellscream through the power of Angle Moa Energy. As the Transformers franchise has expanded exponentially in the 21st century, Starscream has remained one of its premier legacy characters, with new incarnations of him appearing in virtually every major iteration of the brand. He maintains a constant presence in media and toy lines, with more stories and figures to his name than most other Transformers. Iconic imagery and concepts from his past have been repeatedly homaged, like his coronation raiment from the movie, his ghost, or even his friendship with Skyfire. And of course, when a new Starscream toy is made, it's almost inevitable that it'll be recolored into one or more of the other Seekers. Modern media has at times sought to address the logic gap that existed in Generation 1 by justifying why Megatron didn't just get rid of Starscream, suggesting for example that Megatron keeps him close to keep an eye on him, or that he takes delight in watching him fail. But more often, the comics and cartoons of today choose to solve that problem by giving Starscream's treachery permanent consequences that take the character in new directions. This was first evidenced in the Unicron Trilogy, starting with 2002's Transformers Armada. While the Armada comic book depicted this Starscream as the traditional backstabbing schemer, the Armada cartoon offered a uniquely different interpretation of the character that became a fan-favourite aspect of the series. Armada Starscream sought to bring down Megatron not because he wanted to be leader, but simply because he hated him, thanks to the abusive Megatron's refusal to treat the proud young warrior with respect. The conflicted Starscream even temporarily defected to the Autobots in pursuit of this goal, where the unexpected friendship of the human Alexis helped him move beyond his pride and pain, ultimately leading to his tragic decision to sacrifice his life in the battle against Unicron, in order to convince the Autobots and Decepticons to join forces to save Cybertron. In the 2004 sequel series, Transformers Energon, Starscream was resurrected through the power of Energon, but he was left incomplete, lacking any memories of his former life, and in an homage to Generation 1, ghosting between physical and immaterial states. 
He was fully restored by the time of the trilogy's final chapter, 2005's Transformers Cybertron, in which he finally ascended to his classic role of the traitor plotting behind Megatron's back. This series would see Starscream break away from Megatron's command and strike out on his own, acting as a third column in the Autobots and Decepticons' struggle to acquire the Cyber Planet Keys, the power of which Starscream used to siphon off the energy of the Transformers god Primus and transform himself into a giant. Starscream's appearance in this series was based on a design created for the 2002 Dreamwave Productions comic book The War Within. 2007 saw the debut of the live-action movie incarnation of Starscream, with a hulking robot mode necessary to incorporate the mass of his new F-22 Raptor alternate mode. Though the films kept his antagonistic relationship with Megatron, they chose not to showcase his duplicitousness, portraying him simply as Megatron's sycophantic underling. Tie-in comic books and video games would provide fans with a more classically treacherous take on the movie character until he met his end at the hands of Sam Witwicky and a well-placed explosive in 2011's Dark of the Moon. The Starscream of 2007's Transformers Animated was traitorous right from the start. In the first episode of this series, he planted an explosive on Megatron that caused him to crash land on Earth, a crime for which Megatron promptly executed Starscream as soon as he was repaired. But in another callback to the Generation 1 character's ability to survive beyond death, Starscream's sparkless body was reanimated by a sliver of the life-giving Allspark. With this new lease on life, Starscream made another play for leadership, creating a personal army of clones of himself to back him up, each one embodying one aspect of his personality. He's a coward. He's an egomaniac. He's a suck-up. He's a liar. I am not! But the gambit ended in failure and saw him reduced to a severed head, a state in which he remained until the series finale, whereupon his Allspark shard was extracted and he died once more. The Starscream scene in 2010's Transformers Prime cartoon served as Decepticon leader on Earth in Megatron's absence, giving him a good reason to want to hold on to his position of power when Megatron returned to resume command. After making several failed attempts on Megatron's life and narrowly avoiding execution for it, Starscream decided to abandon the Decepticons and go it alone. But this proved to be a bad choice. The second season followed Starscream along a string of failed schemes, and at the end of it all he was finally forced to accept that his ambitions were misguided. Humbled and repentant, he came slinking back to Megatron and was allowed to rejoin the Decepticons. Just happy to have his old job back, Starscream never tried to betray his leader again. Though he did have to spend the show's third season plotting against his new rival for the position of second in command, Shockwave. This Starscream would return in the 2015 sequel series Robots in Disguise, hunting a group of runaway minicons to Earth in order to harness their power, until he was defeated by the Autobots. Starscream was naturally a key player from the very beginning of IDW Publishing's Transformers comic books, his various attempts at seizing power inevitably ending in disaster both for himself and for the Decepticons as a whole. But starting in 2012, the character was taken in a very different direction when, after the end of the war, Starscream entered the political arena and through his usual deceit and manipulation, not to mention killing his opponent, Metalhawk, successfully got himself elected ruler of Cybertron. However, his new position proved not to be as glamorous as he'd hoped. Frequently changing body designs to match up with new toys released in the Transformers Generations line, Starscream found himself constantly at odds with Windblade, who was determined to curb his devious attempts to cement his power. It was thanks to her moral influence, along with the ghost of Bumblebee acting as his conscience, that Starscream, genuinely wanting to be a good leader and a better bot, came to realize that he couldn't be the ruler Cybertron deserved. Hoping to break the endless cycle of lies and abuse that his life had become, he stood down, allowing Windblade to take over as the planet's leader and soon after, willingly chose to give up his life to help Optimus Prime save the Cybertronian race from Unicron. 
Starscream would also become ruler of Cybertron in Machinima's Combiner Wars cartoon. But in it, his seeming benevolence was just a plot to acquire the enigma of combination and transform himself into the ultimate combiner. Driven mad by the Enigma's power, he was destroyed by Optimus Prime and Megatron, but returned as a ghost in the sequel series Titan's Return and possessed the Decepticon Titan Trypticon. Other recent screen appearances have included the Transformers Cyberverse cartoon and a cameo in the Bumblebee movie, and the release of a Cybertronian mode Starscream figure in the War for Cybertron Siege toyline portends future appearances in this form in both the upcoming Netflix animated series and IDW's rebooted comic book universe. An iconic figure in not just Transformers lore, but geek culture itself, so well known that TV Tropes refers to the literary archetype of the treacherous underling as the Starscream, it's a sure bet that whatever form the Transformers universe takes in the future, Starscream will be there trying to scheme and betray his way to the top. And those are the basics on Starscream. I hope it was worth the wait. Share your favorite incarnation of Starscream down in the comments. Thanks for all your support over the first two years of the basics. I hope you'll stick around as we carry on exploring the history of the world of the Transformers.